We're about to move to our next speaker now, uh, who is Matt Greenhall, who will talk about new frontiers of digital access, virtual reading rooms amongst research libraries. Matthew is the Deputy Executive Director of Research Libraries in the UK. He is the Executive Lead for the Digital Shift, Digital Scholarship and Copyright and Licensing Strands of RLUK Strategy. In this role, he works closely with members of RLUK's networks and working groups and has authored research reports and academic articles exploring the digital shift in research library collections, services, spaces and audience interactions. He leads on several of RLUK's strategic relationships and is a passionate advocate for cross-sector collaboration across the GLAM sector, research community and between wider communities of practice. We have a recording um, because um, Matthew wasn't able to join us as he's in the UK and he's probably still asleep or it's um, not a very friendly time to join in person and live. So over to the Matthew's presentation. Thank you. Hello everyone. My name is Matt Greenhall and I'm the Deputy Executive Director of Research Libraries UK. And it's a real pleasure to have this opportunity to speak with you today. In the next 15 minutes, I'm going to very briefly talk through some of RUK's work around the development and delivery of virtual reading rooms within academic and research libraries, both here in the UK and internationally. And in particular, I'd like to talk about three things. Firstly, I'm going to very briefly provide an overview to who we are at Research Libraries UK and our interest in this work. Secondly, and more substantively, I'm going to talk through some of the results of some research that REK conducted into the development and delivery of virtual reading rooms and virtual teaching spaces across this summer. And then finally, I'm going to offer a few reflections for the future and the potential collaborative opportunities that these services present. So this will be a presentation of three parts. So to begin with, who are we at RE UK and what is our interest in this area? Research Libraries UK is a consortium of 37 of the UK and Ireland's largest research libraries. Of our 37 members, 33 are university libraries. Three are the UK's national libraries, the National Library of Wales, National Library of Scotland and the British Library. And the Welcome Collection in London is also an RUK member. Our interest in virtual reading rooms and virtual teaching spaces really emerged from July 2020. This marked the end of the UK's first national lockdown in response to coronavirus. And at this time, many university and academic libraries reopened for staff. Staff could go on site, could get access to collections. But many buildings still remained closed for users. They weren't able to come into search rooms or reading rooms to consult with original materials. So it's really from July of 2020 onwards that RUK became interested in this area. We brought our members together through some of our member networks to discuss their experiences and perceptions of these new and emerging services. We undertook some research to see how our members were developing and delivering virtual reading rooms, both in January of this year and then more substantively across May and June. We've held workshops and discussions and have also published a research report. And most recently, we've published a series of case studies which share the experience of not only our members, but also institutions beyond our UK membership in terms of their development of these services. Now, all of these reports, the recordings of the workshop and the case studies are available on the REUK website, and you can see these by following the link on screen. But before talking about some of the results of our research, I think it'd be helpful if we just clarify what we mean by a virtual reading room or virtual teaching space. And you can see on screen the written definition that REUK has been using that VRRs and VTS services enable humanly mediated remote digital access to archival, special, museum and gallery collections, which do not depend on digitization. They use visualizers and live streaming located from within a physical reading room or learning space, enabling scholars, teachers or members of the public to view and digitally engage with an institution's heritage and cultural collections. They can ask for these to be repositioned and moved by a member of staff located within the physical search room to enable their research and learning. 
And you can see a demonstration of this on screen from our colleagues at the University of Bristol Theatre Collection. So this is the definition that we've used for virtual reading rooms and virtual teaching spaces. And our research has really consisted of two key surveys. Firstly, that uh, quite a small and modest survey in January 2021 of members of our special collections and heritage network. Then more substantively, a larger piece of research in May and June, which not only covered RUK members, but also institutions outside of the RUK membership. And it's this second survey that I'll largely be talking about in a moment. As you can see, we had 32 responses from institutions from across the UK, the Republic of Ireland, the USA, Germany and the Netherlands. And eight of these institutions already had virtual reading rooms and 14 intended to launch them shortly. Now, you can see the full research report and the findings of this survey on the REUK website once again at the link on screen. So what I'm now going to do is to share some of the headline findings and results of this second survey and also offer a number of reflections of what has happened since we conducted this research, how the situation has changed since June of this year. I think the first headline finding really to emphasise is that when we completed this survey in June, these were emerging services. But what really took us by surprise that was, that was the sheer variety of organisations who were developing and delivering virtual reading rooms. They went from major research intensive universities to quite small and humble charitable archives, for example. And as a result of this breadth, we saw a real mixed economy of approaches and costs in terms of the development of these systems. Some institutions were using really humble and modest webcams purchased off the shelf for about £25. Others were installing high spec, high definition ceiling mounted visualizers for around 30,000. So there was a really wide spectrum of different kits and technologies being utilized. But what became apparent in the research that was mobility and flexibility was key. And there was a definite preference in the respondents to our survey uh, to mobile visualizers that could be moved around buildings and across sites with ease. Representing the sort of organic development of these services, internal funding was by far the most significant source of, um, of resource and uh, funding for these, uh, for these services from within the library budget or from within the wider institution. What we've seen though across this survey and since is the shifting status of virtual reading room services. Initially, these were a pragmatic response to a key challenge that members of staff could enter buildings and consult collections, but users couldn't. So these services were, came from that unique situation really of buildings being closed and users needing to gain access to materials, particularly for time limited studies. They needed to finish a monograph, they had to check a reference, or a student needed to consult a document in association with their time limited study program, for example. Since this time though, and since their initial foundation, we've seen these move from a pragmatic response to these specific lockdown restrictions to a bespoke research service. They've become established within institutions, not necessarily mature, but established. And we've seen the use of these vary from one or two appointments a month to some institutions, up to 30 um, appointments per month. So we've seen them become established within their institutions. Now it's fair to say that since lockdown restrictions and access restrictions have been relaxed, and most if not all services are now fully open within the UK, numbers have plateaued, they've stabilised. And this is as full on-site services have been restored. But still many institutions are averaging 10, maybe even 20 requests for virtual reading room services a month. And this takes into account that there's been relatively little promotion. There were concerns about the demand for these services. So many research libraries simply haven't actively promoted the existence of these services and that this demand is really driven by word of mouth um, and organically. We've also seen a shift in status of virtual teaching spaces. Now, these are where a collection of documents are often delivered by a member of staff, a number of staff within a search room or learning space to groups of students externally. 
These were very popular during the lockdown period to enable the curriculum to continue within many universities. And the curriculum in some places depended on these virtual teaching sessions to enable learning to continue when buildings were still closed. We've seen them included within the curriculum and within modules. And more recently, we've seen the growth of hybridity or hybrid sessions, where some members of the class may be on site within a search room and others may be jo joining remotely. Although this has real challenges and takes a great deal of organisation and isn't always um, completely successful due to the combination of on site and online. But what we've seen for both virtual reading rooms and teaching spaces over the last six months and before is a diversification of audience, moving from an overwhelmingly internal audience of academics within the institution to a growth in external researchers and students making use of these services. We see that arts and humanities um, scholars remain the core audience for these, but their application has grown across other disciplines and other academics belonging to STEM subjects, for example, are also making use of them. We've also seen the great growth of, of um, virtual teaching spaces to deliver content to schools, to community groups, and as a part of widening participation initiatives. In addition to the diversification of audiences, we've also seen the diversification of applications. And although archival and special collections materials still are at the heart of virtual reading rooms and teaching spaces, we are also seeing museum and gallery collections, and also the presentation of digital content through screen sharing being shown in addition and in comparison to analog material being shown by visualizers. So very much a mixed, uh, mixed material delivery. Now, one of the key advantages that our members and other research libraries have cited is that virtual reading rooms in particular lead to a shifting dynamic between the staff member and the researcher. That staff members, because they're working so intensively with a virtual reading room user, um, become really embedded in the research process, get a unique perspective of what the researcher is trying to understand and interrogate. And that in that sense, virtual reading rooms provide a real cradle for collaborative research between staff member and archivist and special collections librarian and the researcher at the other end of the visualizer. That this relationship is mutually beneficial and enables serendipitous connections between collections and researchers. And this is being perceived as one of the, the key benefits and one of the key motivations for using a virtual reading room. But in addition to this, we've also highlighted five others within our research report. That virtual reading rooms enable people to gain access to material when they are geographically distant and unable to visit. That they can be quite convenient when a scholar wants to maybe look at just one or two documents, which may not warrant a special journey. It has an investigative element. Scholars and researchers and students using a virtual reading room to establish whether a physical visit is warranted, to check a reference, and also to explore whether a document is worth digitizing, whether they should put in a digitization request. Is it the document they're looking for? Is it worth requesting a, 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 a high spec or high definition a digital copy? And this relationship between virtual reading rooms and digitization is something we're particularly interested in and is explored within our report. Now, I've already mentioned that there is a relatively low technical baseline for virtual reading rooms. They can be very modest and quite um, humble in some of their kits, but they can also be very high spec in terms of their um, lighting, in terms of their visualizers, in terms of their positioning and equipment. And there's a great demonstration of this on screen now from colleagues at the John Rylands Research Institute at Library at the University of Manchester. As I've mentioned, flexibility and mobility seem to be really key. Having flexible technology that can be moved around spaces and applied to different collections is something that members have repeatedly cited as important. And despite all the excitement and the potential application of this technology, the basics of good plugs and PowerPoints, connectivity and space remain really important. And particularly around virtual teaching spaces, which may display and use more documents, a greater variety of documents within a learning session also have additional spatial requirements. Now, as I've mentioned, these require a great deal of staff involvement and are intensive in terms of staff time and expertise. And from the outset, there have been questions around sustainability. 
How much staff time can be dedicated to these? How do we manage expectations not be flooded by requests? And also a reflection within our research that these were relatively easy to deliver when buildings were quiet, when you could dedicate a search room to a virtual reading room environment, when users weren't there physically. So the questions have always been raised around the permanence of the location of virtual reading room and virtual teaching space equipment, which further underpins the importance of flexibility and mobility in terms of some of the solutions being used. None um, um, uh, of the, the research libraries that we're aware of are yet charging for their systems and their, these services, but once again, staff resourcing is a significant cost. And we know that libraries have reflected and have explored introducing charging models if demand far outstrips um, supply and that importance of managing expectations. So now just to conclude, we've been really excited at exploring the potential opportunities and challenges of developing virtual reading rooms and virtual teaching spaces. As I've cited, virtual reading rooms in particular will only ever really be a bespoke research service they're not to replace digitization. They are staff intensive. And there are challenges when delivering these with um, when once users are back in buildings. But we have seen a number of potential applications which we're interested in exploring further. The potential, for example, of a virtual reading room user to be in a number of virtual reading rooms simultaneously. Maybe looking at one collection of documents with one institution and comparing them in real time with those held in another, this process of digital reunification. The ability of virtual reading rooms to connect with communities, to reduce some of the geographical boundaries between collection and a community of interest. And also enabling emergency digital access to materials should a building be closed or a collection be unavailable. As a result, RUK is really interested in working with um, research and academic libraries around the world in terms of areas of potential collaboration. We've identified some on screen now around skills development, the ability to share knowledge between institutions which are developing these services, of benchmarking, and developing agreed frameworks in terms of what makes a good virtual reading room or good virtual teaching space experience and service. As a result of this, RUK working with our partners in IALA, the International Alliance of Research Library Associations, has recently convened an international working group to explore some of these collaborative opportunities. And one of the next things we will be doing is reissuing the survey that we shared earlier in the year in May and June to see how much that landscape has changed. This survey will be open to any academic or research library or any other institution who has developed and is delivering a virtual reading room or teaching service or is interested in developing one. We would really encourage and invite colleagues here today to complete that survey when it's released. And please do not hesitate to get in contact with me if you do have any questions or queries about what I've talked about in this short presentation. Further information about RUK's work in this area is available on the RUK website and further details around the International Working Group are available on the IALA website. So thank you very much for your time.